Hello, my name is Roland Watzecher and in this video I'm going to talk about Viking Axe and Shield. Now, the axe appears to have been a really popular weapon with the Vikings and there must have been a reason for it. Of course, apparently the axe is really good in a number of respects because it's not only a weapon, it's first and foremost a tool. So if you have an axe on you, then you have a really capable tool for, say, splitting logs, something that a sword is totally useless for. Axes are, of course, also much cheaper and easier to make than a sword, such as the one hanging right behind me. Um, however, it does not seem like this was a poor man's weapon. Ibn Fadlan, a chronicler who lived in the 10th century, left us with a really interesting source on the Vikings. Upon his voyages, which also took him into the Volga region, he met some Rus Vikings, which left a deep impression on him. Amongst other things, he wrote about them that every man carried a sword, an axe, and a knife at him at all times. I think that this is a really interesting source because it shows that those Vikings who were able to afford a sword uh, still like to carry an axe with them too. So there must be a reason for this popularity of the axe with the Scandinavians. Viking axes come in a variety of shapes. This is not a surprise because the axe is the tool of the carpenter, the shipwright. They were used for house building and all kinds of purposes. And even today there are various axes for various tasks. The edge of an axe was usually protected by a little wooden sheath that was tied to the axe head by means of leather thongs. Some of these axe sheaths have survived till present day. Both the sheaths as well as the handles of axes were oftentimes carved and decorated with uh, incisions and ornaments. There's a high medieval axe that actually looks perfectly like a Viking axe. That was found in Lödöse in Sweden, and or at least it is kept at Lödöse Museum. And um, this axe has a nicely carved handle. Now, usually when archaeologists see any ornament on an axe, they suppose that it must be for a really wealthy person, or oftentimes decorated axe heads are considered to be a criterion that qualifies uh, a particular axe as a combat tool, a weapon. Now, um, I'm a bit skeptical regarding this um, argument because uh, we know a lot of very ornate axes that were never used as weapons that are decorated and that have uh, carved handles and things like that. There are also axes of impressive dimensions. Here is a photo from a book that shows a worker using an axe that uh, has a really impressive axe head that, if found in a different context, could easily qualify as one of those feared Dane axes. The half, the wooden handle of the Lödöse axe, is also inscribed with runes along one side of the handle. And these runes say P 
Peter owns me, John carved the runes. And everybody who's ever worked on a construction site uh, or was involved in house building knows that when you bring your own tools to the site, it's a really good idea to mark them. So personally, I think this is just an everyday tool and not a particularly valuable implement. It's an axe and uh, people love their axes and they decorated the handles. Okay, but let's talk combat again. So what makes an axe such a fearful weapon? Well, the first thought that springs to mind is that it can deal really powerful blows. Everybody who's ever used an axe to split wood knows that it's really good to do the job. If you have some skill with a wood axe, then you also are well aware that it has to be the tool that does the job. So it's not you, it's the way that you use this particular tool, the axe, to split the log. So you let the you let the axe drop and you accelerate it and you give it a little pull at the end and then it just splits the wood in two. However, in combat, other than a piece of wood, people will not wait for you to deal such a blow against them and strike at them with the axe. There is something that has to be kept in mind, namely that combat has a particular geometry. If, for instance, you strike like you would strike, when, uh, strike with an axe when you are splitting wood, um, cutting timber, then usually the axe moves in an arc. Okay? Now, this means that it needs more time to bridge the distance from A to B than um, an implement that would be pushed forward in a straight line. So anything that moves forward in a straight line will reach the target quicker than something that moves in an arc, which basically is a detour. So that means that the one who strikes in an arc will reach his target later than the one who pokes at him with his weapon directly on a straight line. You may think that this doesn't make such a big difference, but in fact it does. It's so eminent that uh, it is one of the crucial uh, advices pointed out to us in the late medieval fight books in the combat treatises where it says that you should always strike in such a fashion that the point of a sword should go forward to the target in a straight line as if um, a thread was bound to the tip of your sword and somebody would be pulling this thread towards the target. And what is true for the sword is also true for the axe because the laws of physics don't change. Geometry is what it is. So you can always strike at somebody with a swing using a powerful arc when he is already incapacitated. And uh, in high medieval manuscripts, you sometimes see knights who have swung their shield on their backs and they lift their sword with two hands to strike at their opponent. But this opponent is already on his knees. You can use a power swing once you are actually striking at somebody who doesn't strike back. As long as an opponent is still on his feet and is fighting back, then it's good to adhere to the rules of uh, geometry. So if you give up on the idea of swinging the axe to strike forcefully, then of course um, the concept of using an axe to smash shields goes out the window too. And in fact, if you are using a sharp axe, which of course was true a thousand years ago in actual uh, military conflict and in uh, battles or duels or whatever, then striking a sharp weapon into a shield is not a good idea in the first place. Now, why is that? Well, original shields are all extremely lightweight. It doesn't seem like they were made to last and to withstand such blows in the first place. And they didn't have to. 
They didn't have to because people were fighting with perfect measure. Okay, so these people were training for hours per day. There are sources from the high middle ages that inform us people are admonished to train at least twice per day. So here we are looking at professionals. And a shield which I had the privilege to examine in Stettin National Museum in Poland, a uh, surviving kite shield from uh, the late 12th century, does in fact show some marks that were probably inflicted in combat. So there are a few battle damages that you can see on this shield and what's really amazing is that these four cuts which apparently were inflicted by really sharp implement probably a sword they are just so cutting the surface of the shield so only two of four cuts are actually showing on the back of the shield the others didn't even make it through the planks and this is uh, this is even though the planks are only seven millimeters thick. So again, here we're looking at a lightweight shield and um, its measure that is more important than resisting any heavy blows. Plus, the person who strikes at um, an opponent who is carrying a shield will would have probably been well aware of the danger of his weapon getting caught in such a shield. Now this is an experience that you don't make on modern reenactment battlefields. In fact, a blunt implement, a blunt weapon, a blunt sword, your 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 standard reenactment sword is much more capable of destroying an authentically built shield than is a sharp sword. Now of course, they didn't bring blunt weapons to battlefields because destroying shields was not the point. The point was to actually kill the opponent. And so with a sharp sword or a sharp uh, axe, there is um, the clear danger that you might get caught in the uh, planks of the opposing shield. And mind you, these are usually um, these are usually shields made from planks, not from plywood. So with planks, if you cut into the grain and you cut deeply into the shield, what have you done? What have you achieved? Your weapon is sticking in his shield. Well, bravo, now you have successfully attached a tabletop to your weapon. Nobody does that uh, on purpose and um, you don't want this to happen uh, to you in combat either. So if the power swing and the destruction, the damage of shields is not what this axe was uh, used for, is not what made it so popular with the flat center gripped Viking round shield, um, what was it? Now the way that I view Viking combat in general is that it was the shield which was the main weapon. The shield was used to create openings and once you manage to open up an opposing uh, shield and create an opening, then the hand weapon came into play to exploit this opening created by the shield and strike at the opponent. Of course, it's not only the shields working in the bind all the time because you have uh, you have a weapon in your um, weapon hand too, and so you can use your weapon. You can use, say, the sword to press against a particular point um, uh, on the surface of the opposing shield, giving uh, a deceiving pressure signal. I do that all the time, and then. Um, you provoke a particular response and uh, so you are actually working with both hands. In fact, you could view fighting with the shield as actually using a weapon like an axe or like a sword, which is in fact the handle, the grip of a shield, only this stick is attached to a large board which covers you. And this is exactly what I suggest was done with this kind of shields, and it works perfectly. 
So other than a sword, the axe can actually strike forward, shoot forward, catch the edge of an opposing shield, pull it open and then shoot forward into the target. This is something that works like a charm. It's really, really, really cool. You can see it in the combat sequences uh, where I do some experimental sword and shield fighting with uh, Simon at the uh, Berlin Butler Bouts. So eine Axt. To all my fantastic patrons, thanks a lot for your support. You rule.